Uh, so, Harris and I have known each other since uh, we studied together at the Royal Academy, um, where we met, and I wrote a little piece for her, uh, which she played at the Park Lane Group, um, and she liked it, which was nice, and she asked me for another piece that you played. Actually, <laughs> I met Rob because we were in symphony orchestra, and we were playing one of his pieces, and it was a contemporary music concert, and... I loathed all the pieces, apart from his. It was so fantastic. And I was playing a lot of, I was really interested in contemporary music. I was really excited by it. I wanted to do new things. Um, but I was just kind of slightly, my soul was slightly dying in that concert, but not at his piece. And it was so amazing that I think the first time I met you, mm. I asked you to write me a violin concerto. Yes, I, I just said, when are you going to write me a violin concerto? I think you did. Yeah, so I right did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the mailboxes. <laughs> when are you going to write me a violin concerto? Uh, so we, we started small, and I wrote you we a little, small, little piano but, violin but piece. I got there. <laughs> yeah, we got there. In and then I wrote you a bigger uh, violin piano piece, uh, which you premiered in... Where was that? Pursal I think room? it was Parcel Room, yeah. Yes, it was. It reckons out the trees. And then... We moved on to great things. We finally got to the violin concerto, uh, which I wrote in 2006, and you performed in a rather large and quite impressive concert of violin, solo repertoire, and carvel, and all sorts of other things, uh, also at the Cell Room. Um, and since then, it was played once in Sweden, but this is the uh, this is the, this is the, the next the next uh, yes, this is the premier recording. So, which I'm so, so thrilled to be able to do, and I'm I'm so lucky to have had this piece written for me by Rob because I just think he's such an imaginative composer. It's it's not like anything else that I have ever played. Um, and yet there's such intention and um, so much interest musically, rhythmically, in the sound world. Um, it's just, it's a really unique composition. But it is quite hard, isn't it? It is so fiendish. It's so fiendish. I do think that perhaps you wanted to torture me a bit. No, not at all. <laughs> you see, it's, it's quite interesting. Harriet and I had a conversation about this the other day, is that there's a lot of very fast passage work. And one of the things I remember about um, getting to know Harriet's playing was that she had an extraordinary facility um, and really played fast and very high and very and she just felt very natural and very comfortable with instrument. And I told her this last week that that was one of the reasons it was so ferociously hard. And she said, "Oh no, I never thought of myself as somebody who could play fast no, music," <laughs> which is hilarious, of course, because she can, uh, as you can hear in the recording. Um, but yes, it was always kind of one of the, one of the real kind of things that struck struck me. And we've also worked together on some other pieces with uh, with Harriet's ensembles, Cosmos, which is uh, the trio. Um, uh, that does sort of uh, world music. Um, yeah, we're kind of, of kind of big a classically of trained, but we do world music and we improvise. And so Rob's piece had improvisation in it for us, which was which was great. And also with my duo Rhetorica, we're, yes. we're currently working on a really amazing piece, which um, we're doing looping for the first time, which is um, a really brilliant addition to um, the repertoire of, of violin. Really, yeah. um, it opens a whole new world and. Rob does it really, again, really imaginatively. Just um, yeah, so exploring electronics with the two violins, and of course, Philippa, who's the other member of Rhetorica, was recording the uh, Paul Patson yes. that you recorded yes. yesterday. So, uh, lots, lots of, of nice links. Lots of nice connections, yes. Um, and what inspired you to write the bit all the way up the G strings? We were just saying um, <coughs> that it's a bit like kind of Ravel Sagan, but on acid. It just goes further than anyone else, I think, has ever gone up the G yes. string and playing really loudly. Yes, I, I don't, I, I've not gone to check anywhere, but it probably, that top, it's a top C, isn't Yeah, it's it? top C. I think that probably is the highest Simone. anyone's. Well, anyone has ever written in a phrase, let's put it that way, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to just sticking it out there. Um, I play the violin myself, and uh, I think I'm actually a frustrated viola player, because I've always loved the lower uh, strings of the instruments. Uh, of the of the violin and the E string always kind of 
Someone was not really right. So yes, I probably should have played the viola. And I think it has something to do with that, the quality, the incredibly strained and intense quality of the G-string. It's, it's um, so powerful. That sound yes. is like, it isn't like anything else when you're... Yes, it, it, yeah. that's exactly it. It isn't like anything else. And, and, and the, the sheer intensity of that sound and also the violinist is at absolutely full, full stretch. Um, you can't actually stretch any further on the instrument than way up there. Um, so there's real intensity both in performance but in the sound as well, um, which I really enjoy. And I also love the um, the rhythms that you're using because, you know, having played so much contemporary music, I can say that some pieces are written really well and really clearly and the rhythms have real intention. And occasionally there are pieces which have really complicated rhythms, but actually they could have been written in 4-4 and they don't really make sense. These totally make sense they totally make sense they all fit together um even though it's difficult to get one's head around at first they the intention is is incredibly clear and it, it, through the score it, it makes sense with what the other instruments are doing and um but they're really interesting they're really interesting rhythms and and used in really interesting ways with colenio and with pizzicato that give really nice textures um and that comes from your South African influence? Uh, possibly, yeah. I mean, I'm sort of very interested in South African traditional bow music, particularly, as you know. Um, and that certainly rhythmically... I, th I think a lot of my rhythmic work actually doesn't come from traditional music at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I suppose, it's just a, an interest in rhythm more broadly. And I think the, the thing about phrase and intention is very important with rhythm because if rhythm is complex for the sake of complexity, it's, it never really kind of comes off the page, I think. But I think it's very important that if, if it has an intention and if it has, like you say, purpose, then even the hardest rhythm becomes meaningful. Um, yeah. And it's not just, and, and then also it helps the performers engage with it because if you're playing a hard rhythm for the sake of playing a hard rhythm, then of course you sort of, there's, there's not a lot of motivation to put, it, put the time in. Whereas if, if there is a clear purpose to it, then I find people tend to engage with it even if it is a bit hard. So, Volley could change number two now. <laughs> well, you asked. <laughs> I did, and I was so thrilled. I, you know, I was so thrilled when you did it, and I'm so thrilled that we've been able to record it. Yes, well, I'm very excited about that. And uh, yes, uh, there's lots of other fantastic pieces on the disc, which I'm really looking forward to here. I've heard of Deborah's piece, um, but I've not heard the other three pieces, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, great. We're just going to waffle on all day.